Hey folks, if you were at a farming conference and somebody said, hey, what type of soil do you have? And you don't know the answer, after watching this quick video, you're gonna find out. So in the last video, we showed you how to do a soil probe test and how to get your samples ready to send off to the lab for looking at amendments, nutrient recommendations for your soil. But while you're waiting on that, you might as well take the same dirt that you use from the core samples and do an at-home test to see how silty, sandy, or loamy your soil is. Understanding the composition of your soil is vital for making informed decisions about its use. Soil, sand, silt, and clay levels affect drainage, fertility, and compaction, impacting everything from gardening success to construction stability. Conducting an at-home soil compaction test is simple, zero cost, and incredibly insightful. We're gonna take you through the steps to help you interpret the results and provide actionable tips for improving the soil quality. So we all have different soils. Some is super gross and has a lot of clay and sticks to everything. Some of it has great drainage, but not maybe a stable. And some of it is a great mix. And if you have that good sandy loam, you're very, very fortunate to be able to not have to do a whole lot of stuff. But to be able to find out exactly the ratios in which is on your land and at different parts of the property, this simple test is going to help you choose, hey, if we're putting in ground post and sand, do we need to maybe anchor it with a little bit more concrete? Or hey, we're fixing to pound ground post and it has a lot of clay, is that going to make that job much easier? And then that's gonna translate into the growing. Hey, we're gonna plant in clay. Do we maybe need to put a turnip cover crop in there to kind of help aerate in there and put some of that nutrient back? So again, as we're waiting for these soil tests, this kind of helps us get in the right mindset of how much more additional work as far as implementing different amendments for aeration and drainage, how that may affect your farm's performance. So what we're going to use is a couple of handfuls of the remaining soil that we did from the last video, a clear mason jar with a lid, and about 24 hours worth of time to be able to let this slurry that we're fixing to make settle down. So if you're not doing a soil test that you're going to send off to the lab and you don't have this mixture yet, you're just going to go around and get about 20 samples from the area that you want to test. In this case, we're in a hoop house that's brand new and we want to see if we need to add anything to help with compaction and drainage. You're going to go down between four and six inches, trying to match the root zones of the plants you plan to plant and remove any large debris like rocks, twigs, leaves to ensure a clean sample. So the size of the jar really doesn't matter. So this is about the smallest I would use. We're going to fill it up about a third with the soil sample. From here, we're going to add just a drop or two of dish soap that kind of helps break everything up and helps separate the different components. Then we're going to fill it up with water and just shake the fire out of it. Okay, I want to leave a little bit of an air gap in there to kind of help bust up the rest of the soil composition and agitate it as we go along. All right, so now that we have everything in the jar, we're going to put the lid on. We're really going to shake it up. You want to act like you're at a cocktail bar, really giving it good agitation and so what you want to see is a nice consistency of color all the way through and just really shake it up now we're going to go back to our offices and we're going to set this down and we're going to let gravity do the work and we're going to start seeing a separation of the clay sandy loam and sand you'll also see that we're going to have a little bit of water gap and a little bit of humate up at the top as some of these natural particles agitate out, and we'll also be taking a look at how we're calculating that. All right, so the dust has settled inside of the jar. Let's take a look at how to calculate out the sand, silt, and clay. So go ahead and put a ruler up, and we're only going to measure the sand, silt, and clay area of the jar, not the water. Our total measurement for all the soil is one and five eighths of an inch. Once we divide it out by those lines, you'll see the sand at the bottom, the silt in the middle, and the clay on top. There's roughly one inch of clay, a quarter inch of silt, and three eighths inch of sand. To figure out the percentage of sand, silt, and clay, we're going to divide the total thickness by the layer thickness and then multiply by 100. The first thing we're going to do is convert the layer thickness into decimals. So one inch is one, a quarter inch is 0.25, and three eighths of an inch is 0.375. If you don't want to do the hard math on that, just ask the phone to do that for you. We'll then take the total thickness and put that into the decimal. So one and five eighths equals 1.625. So the clay is going to be one divided by 1.625 equals 0.615. And then we're going to multiply that by 100, which is going to give us about 61.5% clay. Don't worry about, there's going to be a little fudge numbers in there, the 1% that is not going to be uh, readily apparent where that goes at the end is pretty unsubstantial. The next layer is silt. 
We have a quarter of an inch, so 0.25 divided by 1.625 equals 0.15 multiplied by 100 is 15% silt. And the sand, 0.375 divided by 1.625 equals 0.23 multiplied by 100 is 23%. So in school, if you want to check your math, 61.5% clay plus 15% silk plus 23% sand is 99.5% and that other 0.5% was all delineated down by some of the numbers past the decimal point after two, and I'm not going to get that far into the weeds. So now that we have our measurement of 61% clay, 15% silk, 23% sand, now that we have our sand, silt, and clay percentages, we can plug that into a soil triangle. The soil triangle can be found at the USDA.com and search soil composition triangle in the search box, or it pretty much comes up if you just type in soil triangle. We're going to take our percentages and we're going to start with clay. Now, if you'll notice on the left, on clay, the numbers are going straight across, while uh, the silt, the numbers are diagonal down, and then at the bottom where the sand is, the numbers are diagonal up. Now, you'll notice that all of those lines converge in the clay part of the triangle. So in this soil sample that we pulled from Paris Natural Farms in their new high tunnel, we know that we have a clay soil. And this is exactly how anybody can find their exact soil type. The next thing you may want to do is go to youtube.com backslash bootstrap farmer and search sand, silt, or clay. And it'll pull up one of the three very short videos that we'll put after this video to tell you what to do next once you have that soil composition. These videos kind of get into the weeds a little bit on dialing down some of the different parts of your farm. We hope you enjoy it. Please like and subscribe. Ask any comments you want down below. I'm the one that answers the comments and I'd be happy to help in any way I can. We'll see you in one of those three videos once you determine what your soil type is.